Hey guys, what is cracking? In this video, I'm going to be talking about what camera you should buy and what you need to take into consideration before such a big purchase. I will also be covering cameras for all budgets to help you make an informed decision about what cameras you should buy and which ones to stay away from, hopefully saving you a bunch of money and a bunch of time. The biggest factor before you even think about buying a camera is what are you gonna be shooting and what is your budget? These are the two most important things you need to figure out before you even start looking for camera gear. So I'm going to be going over a variety of cameras in a range of different price brackets and also going through what industries these cameras would be best suited for. The cheapest option and most likely the free option for most people would be your phone. Phones these days are amazing quality and can shoot not only HD but 4K up to 60 frames. Pair that with a stabilizer like the DJI Osmo and you get some really amazing footage. So never think you're limited by your gear. If you have the right idea, story or concept, you can start right away shooting on your phone. The only downside to this is if someone is paying you for a service or you're trying to be taken seriously as a videographer and you rock up with a phone to shoot on, you're probably not gonna give off the most professional vibe. But learning the ropes on your phone to start with is definitely a good idea. If you have around 500 US dollars to spend, look at the Canon SL3 or the Rebel T7. These are great cameras for beginners, but most importantly, they have interchangeable lenses. So as you get better and more experienced, you can add more glass to your kit, which will stay with you for years to come. Just a side note, this price is for the body only. In some cases, the lens is included in a kit, but I won't be taking into consideration lenses as we will cover that in another video. At the time of recording this, B&H had a Rebel T7 in a kit with two lenses and an SD card for 499 US bucks. Another great buy for under $500 is the Panasonic Lumix G7. You will get 4K out of this camera with no crop, which is a nice touch, and it also performs well in low light. Just keep in mind that this camera has a micro four thirds lens mount. If you can afford another 100 bucks, look at the Canon M50 mirrorless. You will also get 4K recording and full HD at 60 frames, and you'll also get autofocus, but only in HD, not 4K, which is a bit of a bummer. Canon autofocus is the only autofocus I really trust because the technology is so much more advanced than the other manufacturers. But ultimately, you guys should not be relying on autofocus. It can help sometimes, but it is in your best interest to rack that focus yourself, especially while you're learning. You will get a crop on this camera though, switching from HD to 4K, and that isn't always a negative factor. Sometimes it's a good thing because you get more range out of your lenses. Other times it can just really piss you off, so keep that in mind. If you have around a thousand bucks to spend, I would recommend the Sony A6400 and the Sony A7 II or the Canon 80D. These cameras are stepping up with features like IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization. And if you pair this with an image stabilized lens, this will help you out if you cannot afford a gimbal or video stabilizer just yet. You will also start to get into the full frame world, which is just so nice to shoot with. Full frame means no cropping on your lenses, which is awesome. You'll also start to get some really nice photography benefits out of this camera price range with higher megapixels and better image quality. If you have around two grand to spend, I would look at the Sony a7 III, the Z Cam, Blackmagic Pocket 6K, or the Canon EOS R. Stepping up in this category will get you better frame rates like 1920 by 1080 at 120p and 422, 8 and 10 bit rates. This means better image quality for color grading and green screen and more flexibility with those added frame rates. The Blackmagic Pocket 6K camera is a really popular choice and at a great price point with shooting 6K raw internal. Another option for around two and a half grand is the Z Cam. This is a camera I personally haven't had much to do with, but it's really perking the interest of a lot of creators. It has some great features, including raw 4K 10 bit at 30p and 6K at 60p and 4K at 100p. So on paper, it looks bloody awesome. Another camera for 2.5K is the new mirrorless Canon R6. Apart from its overheating issues, this camera looks like a beast. 4K 60p and HD at 120p, all in 422 10-bit. Keep in mind, you will need to use the new Canon RF lenses with this camera unless you get an EF to RF adapter. If you have around three and a half grand to spend, you really can't go past the new Sony A7S III. I've ordered this camera and apart from the RED, we run 100% Canon gear and Canon lenses. So for us to buy this thing, it must be a pretty special camera. It is full frame and has 4K 10-bit in 25, 50 and 100p, 
full HD recording at 200p, external 16-bit RAW recording, and most importantly, improved color science. This was my one gripe with Sony cameras, and it looks like they've finally listened and have improved this, so I'm really excited to get my hands on this camera. And stepping up in price even further, up to five grand, you can't go past the Canon 1DX Mark II. We still use this camera as a B cam to the Canon C200 and use it exclusively on the Ronin S. We love this camera because it shoots 4K, 60p and HD at 120p. It is also amazing for still photography. Another great option is the new Canon R5. This mirrorless body shoots 8K RAW 12-bit in 30p along with a bunch of other recording rates including 4K at 120p which is just mind-blowing. There seems to be an overheating issue with recording 8K and 4K at 30p. You are limited to 20 to 30 minutes recording time before you have to stop and wait a certain amount of time. You can see the official documentation from Canon right here. If this is the case, it seems a little bit ridiculous to me, but I'm keen to see some real world tests on this camera before I pass judgment. Now that we're in the 5K price range, you can start looking at cinema cameras like the Canon C200, Blackmagic Ursa Mini and the FS5. All of these cameras are going to give you more intuitive external controls and inputs like XLR in, physical buttons for settings, dials, knobs, and ND filters. These cameras are made for video production, so they have more video features. Whereas using the DSLRs and the mirrorless options, you have to add on a bunch of external shit to get them to function as proper video cameras, which is fine, but you just still need to keep that in mind. If money is not an option and you're wanting to get the best of the best, you cannot go past red or ARRI, both full digital cinema cameras. That will set you back between 20 to 100K. We use RED in all of our high-end TVCs and personally, it's my favorite camera. Cameras are more than specs written on a piece of paper to me. Every camera has a certain look and feeling to it. Although there are other cameras that shoot in 6K, which is higher than what the Scarlett shoots at 5K, the ergonomics and the feeling you get while shooting with the RED instantly makes me feel more creative and it always leaves me wanting to shoot more. There are also other options like the Alexa Mini and the Alexa Mini LF, but for me, I chose RED rather than ARRI. And that's what I'll be taking you through on this series. It is always best to use the gear you have right now rather than upgrading to a new camera thinking that all of a sudden you're going to magically become a better filmmaker. There is no point purchasing one of these super expensive digital cinema cameras if you have no idea how to use it. All right, moving on to what camera you need to buy and what application you are using it for. When picking one of the above cameras, you first want to make sure you're ticking some must-haves when it comes to the specs of the camera. First thing is you wanna make sure your camera shoots at least 1920 by 1080, which is HD. This is a standard across the board when it comes to resolution and you wouldn't have a resolution less than this if you can help it. Stepping up to 4K will future-proof yourself but will also give you the flexibility in post of cropping in and reframing. But if you're first starting out, shooting in 4K is certainly not necessary. There are also some negatives in shooting in 4K over HD. Obviously, bigger file sizes means you're going to need more hard drive storage. Recording times on your camera cards will also be reduced, if not halved in space. And it will also take a toll on your computer when editing. 4K is much more intensive to work with than 1080. Second must have is multiple frame rates. You want your camera to have the ability to shoot in the highest possible frame rate available. The reason you would want a higher frame rate is the higher the frame rate, the slower the motion you will get as there are more frames for the software to utilize when you slow it down. This is why there is no perfect camera. Every camera usually has negatives or a caveat to it. If it shoots in 4K, it may not shoot in 120 or even 60p. It might only shoot in 30. So just keep an eye on what frame rates you can achieve in what resolution. Next must have is knowing your sensor size. There are three main sensor sizes, micro four thirds, APS-C and full frame. The rule here is the bigger the sensor size, the better your image quality will be. The reason full frame sensors are most desired is because they are generally better under low light and you get better depth of field. With a full frame sensor, you can also get the full range out of your lenses, which means if you have a 24 to 105, you'll get no crop on that lens and you can use the full 24 to 105 as opposed to a crop sensor like the APS-C where there will be a 1.6 times crop. Next must have is color and bit depth. This is why I shoot on RED and Canon. I've always liked the magenta cast of these cameras as opposed to Sony cameras, which have a green cast. 
This is where everything isn't just about the specs, it's about the feeling and what look you prefer. Bit depth refers to the overall number of red, green or blue that a camera can record. We are used to seeing that represented in spec sheets as 8-bit or 10-bit color, or in more expensive cinema cameras, 12-bit color. This is where bit depth comes important if you're wanting to do a lot of green screen or heavy color grading. 10-bit color has four times more levels of color than 8-bit, giving you over a billion total color combinations. This means you have more flexibility in pushing the image colors a certain way in post, whereas 8-bit, it can be a little bit more difficult to fix or pull an image too far. Next must have is ergonomics and functionality. This is really important and often overlooked when looking at purchasing your first professional camera. You need to make sure that your new camera is going to fit in with your style of shooting. Do you shoot on gimbals a lot? Do you need a small light camera? Do you want to shoot handheld? Are you going to be shooting run and gun or more stage setups? Does it have a built-in LCD? Is the screen big enough? Are there XLR inputs or built-in ND filters? Where are the buttons located? Is it easy or is it cumbersome to use? These are all really important aspects to buying a camera and often separate cinema cameras from mirrorless and DSLR cameras. Next must have is media. Do a check to see what media your camera records on. This can sometimes double your setup price if you're not careful. CFast cards can set you back anywhere between 400 to 1000 bucks per card, whereas SD cards can cost anywhere from 20 to 50 US bucks. So this is definitely something to keep in mind if you're on a tight budget. And last must have is batteries. This can also start to add up in your kit price if you're not careful. Take a look at what type of battery your camera takes. Some batteries like the Canon LP batteries are as low as 60 bucks, but will probably only last an hour depending on how thirsty your camera is. Other batteries are much more expensive like the Canon Cinema Series batteries. Depending on the size can range from $200 to over 400 bucks per battery. So you want to make sure you have enough batteries on hand that you're not limiting your shooting to compensate for lack of battery power. And that about wraps it up for the first video in this series. I really hope this video helps you out with finding your next camera to start creating.